An alien invasion is occurring on this planet. We need to be crystal clear about what is human and what is alien. Hi, I'm Saratoga Ocean, and I work together with an interdimensional, interuniversal, and extraterrestrial force known as Telstar, along with Archangel Michael. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to be able to tell if something is human or if it's alien. This is very important to know so that we can effectively navigate our way through all of the current treachery that is happening on this planet. This is so we can protect what is human and reject what is not human. Now, first, I want to be clear that there is a big difference between extraterrestrial and alien. A true extraterrestrial is a part of nature and a part of the universe just like we are. Extraterrestrial in this sense refers mainly to a point of origin, and that's really all there is to it. It just means to originate from someplace other than Earth. But alien, on the other hand, is something vastly different. The natural universe has its own intrinsic design. An alien would be a being, an entity, or a force that goes against that design and exists in conflict with it. So in order to understand the difference between alien and human, is we have to start by being clear what a natural human really is. Now, there are actually two different renditions of a human being that we need to be aware of. The first one is the pure, untainted, cosmic version of human, which is infinite, expanded, and a manifestation of total love. I would refer to this human as a cosmic infinite being who is a powerful creator by nature. The second type of human is the one we see on Earth. This is a human being who has been severely compromised by duality. Unlike a cosmic human, who is a manifestation of infinite love and total presence, we Earth humans suffer from two opposing sides in our consciousness. We actually live with the burden of two selves, the false self, which is the ego, and the true self, which is generally suppressed by the ego. Now, living with these two selves ultimately produces a reality of conflict and struggle, which is why we find it so difficult to evolve. We are constantly distracted by the inner and outer conflicts that we are trying to resolve. Now, this condition of two selves is also why we are so vulnerable to being taken over by evildoers and by alien predators. Because we kind of are suffering from this innate um, situation that really represents the old divide and conquer situation. But that division actually exists within each one of us. See, because we live as divided, conflicted entities within ourselves, we can be easily conquered by demonic or alien predators who seek to exploit that weakness. And this is why it can be rather dangerous for us to frame that inner conflict and division of self as being natural and being what it means to be human. Because when we do that, we're actually just affirming the condition that got us in this mess in the first place. See, the only thing that is truly human is our true self. The ego is a distorted masquerade that constantly seeks to replace who we really are. So we actually have two problems. The first one is the duality that lives inside of us and keeps us in a state of perpetual conflict with ourselves and with each other. The incredible weakness that is produced by that divide is what leads us into our second problem, which is being vulnerable to an alien takeover. And by the way, if you want to know the specific details about exactly how we ended up with this ego and this duality inside of us, along with a solution, you can get on the waiting list for my upcoming online digital course 
Ascension Power, Trust the Light Within. Now, I was originally hoping to release this course this summer, but it's a little more work than I thought, a lot more work than I thought actually. So I will be releasing it in October. So if you wanna get on the wait list, I'll link it in the description below so you can be first to be notified when it's released. Okay, so what I wanna share with you now is the difference between a conflicted earth human and an outright alien force. We need to understand this difference because there are a lot of human looking people on this planet who are demonstrating the characteristics of full blown alien creatures. And I also wanna add that there are unfortunately some demonic influences who are riding the wave of the attempted alien interface with this planet. Now a human being on earth is a person who is still deeply connected to their true self, even if that connection is small and unconscious. They might be conflicted but they still have a heart. They still have what is termed a conscience. Having a conscience means that you still have a connection to love and to what is true and real about being human. Now an alien being has no conscience at all. An alien is not connected to love. And don't forget I, that I told you in the beginning that an extraterrestrial and an alien are not the same thing. We are specifically talking about entities who are alien. We're not talking about extraterrestrials. So an alien demonstrates zero appreciation for nature and no gratitude at all for what is real and for what is divine. They are basically operating from a void instead of operating from a heart. Aliens can be quite vicious, quite cold, and very ruthless. Or they can be empty and lost with no connection to reality. Because they operate in total detachment from love and reality, they tend to be extremely needy and quite desperate. They are always looking for power because unlike us, at their core, they have no power. They have to steal power because they have no source of power within themselves. They are predatory and parasitic in nature and specifically like to prey on entities like ourselves who are confused and divided from within. See, our inner conflict creates a weakness and an opening for them to take us over. Now, I told you a few moments ago that the ego is really our false self. So just for purposes of this explanation, let's, let's perceive the ego for a moment as a dark side. It's dark because when you perceive from the ego, you are instantly unconscious to your true self. It's like the light of who you are is eclipsed, almost like it's momentarily turned off in your experience when you are experiencing life through the ego. Now, I do understand that we need to have the ego to navigate through this finite reality, but I'm not really talking about it from that perspective. I wanna talk about it more from an evolutionary perspective and why this divided self is such a problem that makes us so vulnerable to an alien takeover. And this is why it really is a matter of evolving out of this entire situation of duality. Now let me show you something else that we could actually say about this dark side. So we can add a little bit more clarity to what that dark side within us actually is. It's really a manifestation of any part of you that is not connected to source or love. The experience of that dark side is going to manifest as some version of either fear or anger. Now, when we say to ourselves, that this dark side is beneficial, positive, and spiritually good, then we are actually opening the door to these negative invaders. The vibration of that dark side exists in an unfortunate resonance with alien influences, which is why we as a collective humanity unknowingly have an open door to these alien invaders. So it's not just some weird coincidence that we have all these problems and are experiencing so much treachery right now. So here's a drawing that kind of represents what this looks like. Of course, it's not completely accurate, but it does, it just gives you a representative idea of what I'm talking about. So here's a depiction of an earth human. And on the one side we have 
truth and on the other side we have the dark side the dark side being the ego the false self or the side where the truth of who we really are is eclipsed that's the side that usually manifests in some version of fear or anger now that dark side unfortunately creates a resonating connection with alien influences that are totally dark so the biggest mistake that we have made is to tell ourselves that duality, the ego, fear, death, and anger are all spiritually beneficial and exist in order for us to learn something. We tell ourselves that we are in some kind of a school, which is quite honestly insane. This is not a school. This is a serious evolutionary problem. The fact that we have been collectively unwilling to frame it as a problem is why we are going down so fast right now. Here's what this looks like. On this side, we have an example of ourselves making a mistake, saying to ourselves, it's okay, we're just here to learn. And then on the other side, we have an example of ourselves as a human being speaking the truth to ourselves, which is, wow, something is wrong and needs to be corrected. So the first most important thing to do is to recognize that you are meant to be whole. You are not supposed to be divided with two selves harboring good and bad and right and wrong and all of the inherent conflict that goes along with that. And here's something extremely interesting. Do you know that we are not even supposed to have the capacity to be unconscious? See, if you want to keep framing your dark side as being equal to your true side, the positive, beautiful side of light that you truly are, if you want to keep portraying to yourself that those sides are equal, well, then it's kind of like saying that a, the truth is equal to a lie because those two selves actually manifest as who you are and who you're not. So the very first intention that we need to have is that we need to evolve out of this duality altogether. We need to be whole again. See, that is an intention that can be supported by the highest forces of light in this universe and even beyond this universe. This is a choice and an intention that every person can make for themselves. You can either look at the fact that you live with the conflict of having two selves and adopt a whole bunch of excuses for that condition, or you can say, hey, this is a problem. I don't like this. I want to see this corrected. In which case you immediately set yourself on a much higher evolutionary path. Isn't that awesome? Now let's talk about the specific evidence of an alien invasion happening on our planet right now. It's actually very easy to recognize an alien factor. It shows up as anything that is anti-nature and anti-human. You know, what I am most struck by right now is the shocking transformation that we are seeing in all of our world leaders and in our local leaders. Most of these people are behaving like a whole bunch of aliens who are on exactly the same page. It happened very suddenly at the beginning of 2020, and now it almost seems to be accelerating exponentially. It seems that no amount of cruelty, gaslighting, and lies is enough for these people to inflict upon the rest of us. You know, in a previous video, I talked about having encountered two well-known political figures in the past on separate occasions neither of whom appeared to be human. One was like a non-human android, and the other one had a powerful reptilian energy. And like I said before, I'm not going to say who these people were because it's probably best that I don't. But what's going on right now worldwide is literally unprecedented. The cruelty, the abuse, the destruction, and the lying are literally over the top. And the massive amount of fear being pumped into the human consciousness is also unprecedented. Now, these leaders might look human, but honestly, there's no longer anything really human about them. And this is actually looking very much like a concerted effort between reptilian forces and AI. I mean, I guess it's possible that these leaders have been replaced by shape-shifting reptiles. The fact that their coldness and their heartless behavior is so pronounced 
has a distinctly reptilian flair to it. And their love of violence and their apparent hatred for peaceful protest is also very reptilian in nature. And so is the deception and the lying. Like I said before, the reptilians use fear to create violence and suffering. They are experts at mind control. They are able to subdue and control the population using these tactics, which readies the planet for an AI takeover. So what does this mean for all of us who are human? Because as I said, even though we're conflicted within ourselves, we are still very much human beings. We're just human beings who are currently suffering from an evolutionary problem. But that no, in no way changes the fact that we're actually human. Now we have to stop viewing these leaders and a lot of their media minions as human because their behavior shows that they're not. You can't be this cold and this heartless and still be human. You can't be this intent on crushing humanity and still be human. So these are not just humans gone bad. These are literal aliens who are cold, ruthless, and heartless. See, the fact that the change was so sudden and so globally unified is what makes me suspicious that we are literally dealing with an alien takeover. But see, here's the thing. They want us to think that they're human so that we will identify with what they say and what they do. That way it's so easy for them to confuse us and gain our compliance. And this is one of the reasons it's been so convenient for them to tell us that we're the only life in the universe and there is no other life. It's to keep us perpetually confused about what is going on. So then we think that everything we're seeing is human. Now, let me share with you another story about something I experienced um, a couple of weeks ago that was really, really strange. My husband and I were driving through this parking lot and at the end of the parking lot, there was a big garbage truck. And there was a lady who was one of the workers and she was dragging this trash can over to the truck from a business. So it was a big trash can. And I watched her from a distance. And I, at first, I really felt sorry for her because her body language was just like, I said, wow, that woman really hates her job. And I felt sorry for her. I felt like, gosh, she just looks so miserable, so unhappy. But here's the weird thing that happened next. We started, we were, as we were driving forward, she walked past my side of the car, dragging this trash can, and suddenly she glanced in my direction. I'm not kidding, her eyes were black. There was no one there. It was so creepy, it was so weird. She had this look on her face, I'm like, whoa. I don't know what that is, but that's not a human. That, that was like, all I could think of was like, gosh, I wonder if that's what they mean by a zombie because I've never seen eyes like that. There was like no one there. They were like completely black. There was no white in her eyes. It was so, so bizarre. So there are some very, very strange and very bizarre things going on on this planet right now. So here's the important thing to recognize. Unless we are willing to admit that we have a deeper problem, which is what is making us so vulnerable to all this kind of stuff, we will never be able to evolve beyond these types of situations. Now, as a humanity, we have been very, very attached to our egos and to what I was referring to as our dark side. You see it revered spiritually, and you also see it revered in psychological circles as well. You see it revered as some sort of teacher in our personal growth. And this is actually another reason why it's very difficult for benevolent, highly evolved extraterrestrials to come here directly and get involved in this situation. See, ultimately it wouldn't solve anything because we're still very attached to that darkness inside of ourselves. And we would therefore continue to revere and hold on to that vulnerability, which would only make us pray to something else equally or even more nefarious. Now, the reality is that this entire universe has a big problem with duality, but the higher you go in evolution, the less likely that a civilization can fall prey to these kinds of alien forces. And that's because at some point, they stop worshiping the darkness inside of themselves. They stop validating it and referring to the experience 
as being a part of being human. They recognize that to be truly human means to be whole again. So they work to eliminate the source of fear within themselves and transmute everything in them that isn't of the light. And they are thus able to work together with powerful forces of evolution because they're all on the same page and they share the same goal. See, when we revere darkness and we call it necessary, we are not on the same page with these higher forces of evolution. So there are essentially two things that we need to do right now. The first thing is this. We need to consider the idea that having a dark side, being unconscious, and living from ego is a serious evolutionary problem that needs to be corrected. So we each need to ask ourselves, where, where do we stand in this regard? How attached are we to these kinds of things? And this is a very, very serious question that we each need to ask ourselves individually, but we ultimately, hopefully, at some point in time, will ask ourselves collectively. You know, are we just tired of all this? And more importantly, are we willing to listen to our hearts that are telling us that these kinds of things, this darkness, this unconsciousness, this pain is just not really desirable and doesn't really have a good enough excuse for us to continue suffering through it. And then the second thing we need to do is this. We need to learn to recognize behavior on this planet that is not human and is actually alien in nature. And this is important because see, when we identify the darkness within ourselves as being, you know, just a part of being human, then we are much more inclined to accept true alien behavior as also being human, when in truth, it's nothing of the kind. When we think that alien behavior is human, then we are much more likely to dismiss it or overlook it. We are more likely to comply with it because on some level, we feel an unconscious resonance with that behavior inside ourselves. So the most important thing right now is that we must retain our humanity so that we can continue to evolve and ascend. And all we have to do to do that is to really be clear where we stand about this duality inside of ourselves. The duality does not prevent us from evolving. But what does prevent us from evolving is when we embrace it, we revere it, we accept it, we say, oh, it's so wonderful, it's so good, it's so positive. It's here to teach us, we're here to learn from it. That is what prevents us from evolving at a much, much higher level that will therefore take us out of these kinds of awful situations that we find ourselves in and that this planet has been in for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So the only way to retain our humanity amidst the chaos, trauma, and confusion happening now on this earth is to have absolute clarity about what it really means to be human in the cosmic sense of the word, in the true sense of the word, and to understand that being truly human means to be whole within ourselves, not divided, not split into two opposing parts. And the only thing in this sense that can ever, ever, ever be whole is that which emerges from love, from light, from the infinite presence of who we really are. That is where we find the wholeness of our true selves. And as a human being, we are meant to have that wholeness be the only thing that is manifesting through us. That is really the goal of what we as a collective, as a humanity need to evolve towards and into. But we can't do that unless we set that intention with clarity and consciousness within ourselves. Overall, this is something that we really need to do regardless of whether we're experiencing an alien invasion or not. The alien takeover, all the AI stuff, all of that stuff is as bad as it is. Even if that wasn't happening, we still need to evolve in the direction of becoming whole. What I think it comes down to in the end is we really just have to ask ourselves, are we just tired of feeling this so victimized, so vulnerable, so in a condition of always struggling and feeling like as a planet, we're just not really getting very far. Are we just tired of all that? Because you see, once we really come to terms with it and we say, you know what, 
enough of this. We're, we just, we just want to move forward. We just want to evolve. We just really, really want to go to that higher level of reality. We really want to ascend. And in order to ascend, we must evolve. We must have an intention and a direction and a clarity about exactly what it is we're seeking, exactly what that end result is that we want to experience within ourselves. So I hope this message has given you a lot of food for thought. I hope it's given you quite a few things to contemplate and hopefully it's given you a bit of clarity as well. And remember, if you want to get on the wait list for my upcoming digital course, Ascension Power, Trust the Light Within, just sign up on the wait list. It's linked down below and um, you can be the first to know as soon as I release it. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with anyone else who you feel would find this information valuable. And be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I am here every Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday with all new videos. And with that, I'm sending you so much love, light, and high vibrational energy. And I so look forward to seeing you in the next video. Namaste.